Welcome back to my Fundamentals of Photography series. Today we're looking at film speed, or as the boffins like to call it, ISO. Now all ISO stands for is the International Standardization Organization. Why that name? Well that's because it was just a term camera manufacturers adopted when film, was, film speed was standardized in the 1970s. So you don't really have to worry about what it stands for, all it actually denotes is film speed. Now like with aperture and shutter speed, there's an awful lot of mathematics that goes on in the background, but you don't really have to know what that mathematics is doing and what it's saying and, and how to work it out because it's all done for you. And it doesn't matter if you've got a Nikon, a Canon, Olympus, all those other camera makes will all use the same standardised numbers. Okay? So, I've got a Nikon D800 as you know, and you will find the ISO button on pretty much most Nikons on the top somewhere and it will actually have its own button that you can depress and then you'll see on the LCD screen either on the, back, on the top or on the back and inside the viewfinder what the ISO is set to. Now if you've got a different camera you may have to look to see where that uh, button is, it may be, you may have to press a combination of buttons just to be able to find out where it is but there will be somewhere on your camera a way of setting the ISO or film speed. Okay, You may have to go into the menu uh, because some of the lower end cameras don't seem to put it on, uh, on display, you have to go in and set it manually that way. Now there is a system on most digital cameras these days to set auto ISO. Now that's frowned upon by most photographers because you're not actually in control of the camera but there's absolutely nothing wrong with setting auto ISO. I'm a professional photographer and I'll probably get shot by the Professional Photographers Guild or something, there's probably an assassin somewhere, but if you've got auto ISO on your camera and you take all sorts of different scenes in all sorts of different light and the one thing you don't want is camera shake, so you're not getting enough light into the camera, putting it into auto ISO will help you get correctly exposed pictures without any camera shake. So what does film speed actually do? Well, in the days of film, you brought different films for different types of light. The lower the number, the less sensitive to light the film was. So, for example, if we have a look here, this camera here is set to ISO 100. Okay, That is a very low number for ISO, although in the days of film they used to go to 50, sometimes even 25. There was a very famous film called Kodachrome 25 that I used to love. Uh, it was very, very high quality film, but it only had an ISO rating of 25, which meant that you had to have really bright light or really fast lens to be able to capture images on that film. So this one starts at 100, and then we'll start going up, and just like with shutter speed and aperture, the numbers don't seem to go up in uh, logical increments, but it's all based on the mathematics, as I've said. So we go up through 125, 160, 200, 250, 320, 400. Now this isn't the speed of the shutter opening. This isn't shutter speed, this is film speed, which is just a reading of sensitivity of the digital sensor. Now, on the days of film, that rating was all to do with how the film was exposed and how it was developed. With the digital sensor, it's more about the actual... Um, sensitivity of the actual sensor and so they could have used absolutely any figures they wanted but they chose to stick with the uh, film speed option so we go up we get to 400 now in the days of film 400 was a really fast film and you actually started to lose quality in the beginning of digital cameras 400 was probably about the maximum you could go before you started getting what was called digital noise which is a little bit like the grain on film. So the pictures started to get really pixelated, they started to go soft, you'd lose quality in and detail in the shadow areas and the highlights would start to blow really quickly and you'd just lose a lot of the depth that a picture had. But, going back a little bit to my point about auto ISO, if you have a modern digital camera, so this is a Nikon D800, which was, is now a few years old, but if you've got one of the more modern cameras, 
you can actually start to use ISOs a lot, lot higher. Now this one, and I've used this before, I use this quite regularly on ISO 640 or 800. I've also used it at 2500 ISO and got acceptably um, good results. But this one will go up to 6400 ISO, which is incredibly sensitive to light. So you can use this in really, really low level light and you will still get reasonable pictures, they're not going to be the best quality I would stick to probably 2500 but that is actually quite key to knowing your camera so one of the things you should do when you first get a camera is actually test what the highest ISO you can use is so the best way to do that is just to take a regular scene uh, set your camera up on a tripod and just take different shots at different ISOs and then look at them on screen, blow them up to 100% and see which ones start to lose quality. Now there's still photographers who will tell you you need to use the lowest ISO your camera can produce to get the best quality. But that's not really the case. You can crank your ISO up to the maximum level that you can acceptably see a decent image being produced and use that ISO quite comfortably. The days of using the lowest ISO really are over. If you've got a decent quality camera there's no reason why you can't use a high ISO like 800, 1600, um, 2000, 2500, anything like that. They will be perfectly acceptable images to view on screen, to put on Instagram, to put on Facebook, to even print. When you print an image from a digital file you can print what actually looks like quite poor quality images when they're viewed on screen at 100% but will actually print out pin sharp. So don't be too scared of going up in the ISO to get the shot. I would rather have a slightly grainy image in post-production than I would an image with camera shake. Because what ISO allows you to do is change the sensitivity to light so you don't have to reduce the shutter speed. And therefore, as you remember back from the last uh, episode when we were talking about shutter speed, if you get too low a shutter speed, you're in real danger of getting camera shake. So what ISO allows you to do is bring up the sensitivity to get the right exposure without actually changing the shutter speed or the aperture for that matter, if aperture is the important part of your picture. Okay, so that's just a real quick look at ISO, what it can do for your photography, where to find it and how to adjust it. Next time, what we're going to do is put all three elements of the exposure triangle together and show you how to use each one to create a really good picture. So we're going to go outside and look at each one and how they build up to make a perfectly exposed picture. So that's going to be a lot longer video, uh, more in depth, and will actually give you a real good understanding. So the important thing is to watch all three videos in the first part of this fundamental series. So you want to watch the aperture one, the shutter speed one, and now you've seen this ISO one, and then you can progress onto the next one, which will actually give a bit more in depth, and you've already got the basics in your head. Uh, and also get yourself familiar with your camera, uh, work out where the how to change the aperture, how to change the shutter speed, and how to change the ISO. Uh, also work out where the auto ISO is, because that's a good thing to have, that's generally in the menu. And, and then look at maybe doing a, a quick test to make sure you know what your highest ISO is going to be. If you want to know when that next video is coming up, hit the subscribe button, maybe over there. If you like this video, hit the like, and if you want to ask a question or leave a comment, there's that box down below to uh, make yourself known. Okay, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.